Chapter 25 The White Cleaver Day had been beaten back by the time they got to Denham Street, and the night was soaking through the city. It was a long street, dirty and quiet. The Bentley pulled up outside the warehouse. Ghastly and Tanith were waiting for them when they got out. Anyone inside? Skullduggery asked, checking that his gun was loaded. Not as far as we can tell, Ghastly said. They could be masking their presence. If Serpine's in there, or Bliss, we're going to need backup. They aren't here, Skullduggery said. How do you know? Stephanie asked. Serpine used his place for something. Something big and strange enough to raise a few eyebrows. He'd know eyebrows were being raised. He'd know I'd hear about it. So he's already moved on. Then why are we here? You can only anticipate what someone is going to do if you know exactly what that someone has just done. They approached the single door, and Tanith put her ear against it and listened. After a moment she put her hand over the lock, but instead of the lock breaking, this time Stephanie heard it click. How come you can't do that? Stephanie whispered to Skullduggery. It's faster than picking a lock and quieter than blasting the door down. He shook his head sadly. A living skeleton isn't enough for you, is it? What does it take to impress young people these days? Stephanie grinned. Tanith pushed the door open and they went inside. The door led straight into the warehouse office, a dark, pokey room with a desk and an abandoned cork board. The place obviously hadn't been used by any reputable company for quite some time. The office had a door that opened out to the warehouse proper and a grime-covered window that Stephanie peered through. Seems quiet enough, she said. Skullduggery hit a few switches on the wall and lights flickered on. They walked out onto the warehouse floor. There were pigeons in the rafters high above them that cooed and hooted and fluttered from one perch to the next, startled by the sudden light. They walked to the middle of the warehouse, where an array of what appeared to be medical equipment was collected around an operating table. Stephanie looked at Skullduggery. Any ideas? she asked. He hesitated. Let's get the obvious out of the way. A lot of these machines would suggest that some kind of transfusion took place here. Tanith held up a tube, examining the residue within. I'm not a doctor, but I don't think this is the result of medical research. Magic, then, Ghastly said. You can inject magic? Stephanie asked, frowning. You can inject fluids with magical properties, Skullduggery told her as he took the tube from Tanith. Before we had wonderful machines like this, it was a far messier process, but the result was the same. And what was the result? The patient came out of the operation a changed man, or woman, or thing. The question here is what was the object of the game? What changes was Serpine seeking? And who was the patient? Patients, actually. Sorry? There are two sets of needles, two IV bags, two of everything. Enough to take care of two separate operations. We'll take a sample back to the sanctuary, break it down and try to find out what it does. But for right now, everyone take a look around. What are we looking for? Stephanie asked. Clues. Stephanie glanced at Tanith, saw her raise an eyebrow sceptically and managed to restrain her grin. Skullduggery and Ghastly walked slowly, passing their gaze over every surface, examining every centimetre of the machines, the table and the surrounding area. Stephanie and Tanith found themselves side by side, looking straight down at the floor. What does a clue look like? Tanith whispered. Stephanie fought the giggle down and whispered back. I'm not sure. I'm looking for a footprint or something. Have you found one yet? No. That's probably because I haven't moved from this spot. Maybe we should move, pretend we know what we're doing. That's a good idea. They started to walk very slowly, still looking straight down. How's the magic coming along? Tanith asked, keeping her voice low. I moved a shell. Hey, congratulations! Stephanie shrugged modestly. It was only a shell. Makes no difference. Well done. Thanks. What age were you when you first did magic? I was born into it, Tanith answered. Folks were sorcerers. My brother was always doing something. I grew up doing magic. I didn't know you had a brother. Oh yeah, big brother and all. You have any brothers? I'm an only child. Tanith shrugged. I always wanted a little sister. My brother's great. I love him to death. But I always wanted a little sister to talk to, to share my secrets with, you know. I wouldn't mind a sister either. Any chance of that happening? I can't see what would be in it for my parents. 
I mean, they have the perfect daughter already. What more could they want? Tanith laughed, then tried to cover it up with a cough. Found something? Skullduggery asked from behind them. Tanith turned, looking serious. Nope, sorry. I thought I had, but no, it turned out to be, um, more floor. Stephanie hugged herself, trying to stop her shoulders from shaking with laughter. Okay, Skullduggery said. Well, keep looking. Tanith nodded, turned back and nudged Stephanie to get her to shut up. Stephanie clamped a hand over her mouth and had to look away when she saw Tanith's face, straining to hold her composure. Cow, Tanith muttered, and that was it. The floodgates opened and Stephanie doubled over with laughter that echoed throughout the warehouse. Tanith pointed at Stephanie and backed away. Skullduggery, she's not being professional! Stephanie's laugh proved infectious and Tanith was soon on her knees. Skullduggery and Ghastly just looked at them. "'What's going on?' Ghastly asked. "'I'm not entirely sure,' Skullduggery answered. They looked at Stephanie and Tanith and shook their heads. "'Women,' they said together. Stephanie wiped the tears from her eyes and looked around at Skullduggery, and then something fell from the ceiling and landed behind the detective without a sound. Her laughter vanished as she stood. "'Behind you!' she yelled. Skullduggery wheeled, gun in hand, and everyone froze. They looked at the man. His uniform, though identical in design to the cleavers, was of startling white. Stand down, Ghastly said as Stephanie and Tanith ran up to join them. We're working with the Elder Council. Stand down. The white cleaver didn't move. What do you want? Skullduggery asked. A moment dragged itself by, and then the white cleaver raised his arm and pointed at Stephanie. So we need to know, Skullduggery said and fired, four shots to the chest and two to the head. The white cleaver jerked with each impact, but it was clear that the bullets didn't penetrate his coat, and the two to the head ricocheted off the helmet, leaving dark scratches against the white. Damn, Skullduggery muttered. Stephanie stayed back as Skullduggery, Tanith and Ghastly closed in on their new adversary. The helmet denied them any chance of knowing where he was looking, but Stephanie knew he was looking right into her eyes. Tanith attacked first, fainting with a low kick, then snapping it up high. The cleaver didn't fall for the ruse and slapped the high kick away as Ghastly attacked from behind. The cleaver spun with a kick of his own that caught Tanith in the gut, and he ducked under the punch that Ghastly sent his way. Ghastly's fists blurred, but the cleaver absorbed the blows and his hand shot out, catching Ghastly in the side of the neck. Ghastly staggered and Skullduggery thrust out his palm and the air rippled. But instead of being pushed backwards, the cleaver moved through the ripples without being affected. The uniform, Stephanie thought. Unfazed, Skullduggery threw a punch that the cleaver caught. Skullduggery was flipped over, but when he landed, he had reversed the grip. His foot sneaked out, striking the cleaver's knee, and now Skullduggery was the one doing the twisting, and the cleaver was the one who flipped. While he was in mid-flip, however, the cleaver got his free hand to the ground to cartwheel back to his feet. A pause followed, and Stephanie's three friends reappraised their opponent. Tanith took her sword from beneath her coat and slid it from its scabbard. Ghastly let his jacket slip off and Skullduggery put away his pistol, freeing his hands. You don't have to do this, he said to the cleaver. Tell us where Serpine is. Tell us what his plans are. We can help you. You are not going to lay one finger on Valkyrie Kane, but we will help you. The cleaver's answer was to reach behind him and draw his scythe. Skullduggery grunted in dissatisfaction. The cleaver darted towards them before anyone could react, using the scythe like a pole vaulter to swing himself up, kicking both Skullduggery and Ghastly in the chest at the same time. They went stumbling back and Tanith came in, sword flashing. The cleaver dodged back, whirling his scythe to parry the blade. Sparks flew as the metals clashed, sword against scythe, and such was the ferocity of Tanith's assault that the cleaver didn't notice Ghastly until it was too late. Ghastly's strong arms wrapped around him, pinning his arms to his sides, making him drop the scythe. Tanith moved in for the kill and the cleaver's leg blurred in a crescent, his boot heel slamming into her wrist as she neared. She hissed in pain and dropped the sword, clutching her wrist. The cleaver rammed his heel into Ghastly's shin and whacked the back of his helmet against his nose. He then kicked both legs into the air and over his head, slipping out from under Ghastly's arms. His hands went to the ground and he continued the movement, sending both boots flying into Ghastly's face. Ghastly fell back and the cleaver held the handstand for a moment, then dropped back to his feet as Skullduggery came at him. Skullduggery summoned fire and hurled two handfuls into the cleaver. The flames didn't catch, but they did throw him back, and Skullduggery threw a lightning-fast jab that he followed up with a right hook. He didn't seem to mind that he was hitting a helmet, and Stephanie noted with satisfaction the way their opponent was sent stumbling. 
The cleaver recovered quickly, however, and they started trading punches and kicks, elbows and knees, and she watched them block and lock and counterlock, all the while moving around each other in an elaborate and brutal dance. Stephanie, Skullduggery called out as he fought. Get out of here! I'm not leaving you! You have to! I don't know how to stop him! Tanith snatched her sword off the ground and grabbed Stephanie's arm. We have to go, she said firmly, and Stephanie nodded. They ran back the way they had come. As they were passing into the office, Stephanie glanced back, saw the cleaver spin with a kick that sent Skullduggery to the floor. In one fluid movement, he got a toe under the staff of the scythe, flicked it up and caught it, and then he was running after her. Stephanie burst into the dark alleyway and Tanith pressed her hand against the door as she closed it. Stephanie heard her mutter, Withstand, and a polished sheen spread across its surface. That'll hold him for a minute, she said. They ran for the Bentley. The cleaver pounded on the door behind them, but it wouldn't open and it wouldn't break. The pounding stopped. They reached the Bentley and Tanith looked at Stephanie. Do you have the key? A window exploded high up near the warehouse's roof and the white cleaver dropped and landed in a crouch in the middle of the alley, shards of glass raining down with him. He straightened up, unfolded his arms and raised his head. Tanith stood between the cleaver and Stephanie, holding the sword in her left hand. She cradled her injured right arm by her side. The cleaver twirled his scythe slowly. Skullduggery and Ghastly leapt through the broken window. The cleaver turned and Ghastly crashed into him. Start the car, Ghastly yelled. Skullduggery pressed the keyring and the lock sprang open with a beep and they all jumped in. The engine roared to life. Ghastly, Skullduggery shouted, let's go! Ghastly slammed a punch into the cleaver and rolled to his feet, but the cleaver kicked out and Ghastly stumbled. The scythe flashed, the staff whacking against Ghastly's jaw. He dropped to his knees. Ghastly! Stephanie screamed. Skullduggery opened his door, went to get out, but Ghastly raised his eyes, shook his head. We're not leaving you! Skullduggery shouted. The cleaver stepped up to Ghastly, ready to swing the scythe. You've got to, Ghastly said, ever so softly. He lowered his head and clenched his fists, his eyes closed. As the cleaver swung, the ground seemed to latch onto Ghastly's knees. It spread instantly, turning his legs to concrete, then his torso, his arms, his head, his entire body in the time it took the scythe to cross the space between them, and when the cleaver tried to take his head, he could only chip at the neck. Stephanie instinctively knew what he'd done. This was the last elemental power, Earth, the power Skullduggery had described as purely defensive and purely for use as a last resort. The white cleaver looked directly at Stephanie as Skullduggery put the car in gear. They left them there, the white cleaver and ghastly, and sped through the city streets.